SLT Mobitel Home Broadband Samaging Non-Stop Gamanagata Data Bowan. SLT Mobitel Home Broadband Samaging Non-Stop Gamanagata Data Bowan. Pias Jody Pack, Rupel Tis Hataka Vasiak, then Rupel Ekasi Hatalis Pahai. Provisions. President Ranil Vikramasinghe revises down the personal tax for income threshold to 1.2 million from 3 million in a bill gazetted with changes made to Inland Revenue Act. All for one, one for all. Leave no one behind welfare program targeting low income families received 2.3 million applicants. Advisors. Lavish Eric Solim and former Maldivian President Mohammad Nasheed appointed as international climate advisors to President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Tip of the iceberg. The IMF cuts down on global growth forecast for 2023 to 2.7%, saying that the worst is yet to come, while the UK already faces recession risks. All this and much more coming up tonight on First at Night, this Wednesday, the 12th of October, 2022. From Ada Verana. This is Other There and Now First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Other There and Now 24's English News. I'm Andrew Bernard. Now, a draft amendment bill was submitted with regard to amending the Inland Revenue Act proposed new tax amounts payable so far by President Ranil Vikram Singh was published as a gazette today. The most notable feature of the draft proposal is the revision of the annual personal income tax subjected to a tax-free threshold being reduced from 3 million rupees to 1.2 million rupees. The Inland Revenue Act were gazetted through a new bill published by Ranil Vikram Singha yesterday. According to the draft, it has been proposed to tax people based on different income earning criteria. As such, the taxable sum from the income of a person within the first six months starting from the 1st of April 2022 till the 30th of September 2022 begins with people earning an annual income exceeding 1.5 million rupees. The draft states that within this period a tax will not be charged on anyone earning an income of 1.5 million rupees or lower. All individuals earning an income exceeding 1.5 million rupees but not exceeding 3 million rupees will be required to pay 90,000 rupees plus 12% of the amount in excess of 1.5 million rupees as taxable income. In addition, anyone earning an income exceeding 3 million rupees will be required to pay a taxable income of 270,000 rupees and 18% of the amount in excess of 3 million rupees. Meanwhile, from the 1st of October 2022 till the 31st of March 2023, it has been decided to not tax anyone earning 250,000 or lower. However, all those earning an income exceeding 250,000 but not exceeding 500,000 rupees will be required to pay 15,000 rupees plus 12% of the amount in excess of 250,000 rupees as taxable income. Individuals earning an income of over 500,000 rupees but not exceeding 750,000 rupees will be required to pay 45,000 rupees plus 18% of the amount in excess of 500,000 rupees as taxable income during this period. Further, anyone earning an income exceeding 750,000 rupees but not exceeding 1 million rupees will be legally required to pay 90,000 rupees plus 24% of the amount in excess of 750,000 rupees in the second six months starting from the 1st of October 2022. Those with an annual income exceeding 1 million rupees but not exceeding 1.25 million rupees Meanwhile, are liable to pay 150,000 rupees plus 30% of the amount in excess of 1 million rupees. All those with an income in excess of 1.25 million rupees will also be required to pay 225,000 rupees plus 36% of the amount in excess of 1.25 million rupees. In the meantime, the draft bill also proposes for anyone earning an annual income amounting to 500,000 rupees or less do not be charged with the tax from the 1st of April 2023. However, all those earning an income of over 500,000 rupees but not exceeding 1 million rupees will be charged with 30,000 rupees plus 12% of the amount in excess of 500,000 rupees 
as taxable income. The next taxable income bracket includes individuals with an annual income exceeding 1 million rupees but not exceeding 1.5 million rupees. All people belonging to this tax bracket will be required to pay 90,000 rupees plus 18% of the amount in excess of 1 million rupees. Further, anyone with the income tax exceeding 1.5 million rupees but not exceeding 2 million rupees will be required to pay 180,000 rupees plus 24% of the amount in excess of 1.5 million rupees. In addition, anyone with an income exceeding 2 million rupees but not exceeding 2.5 million rupees will have to pay a taxable income of 300,000 rupees plus 30% of the amount in excess of 2 million rupees. Meanwhile, 450,000 rupees and 36% will be charged as tax payables from all those earning an annual income in the excess of 2.5 million rupees. President Ranil Vikram Singh advised the Sri Lanka police to take appropriate measures to prevent using children as shields in protests. During a special discussion on the protection of the rights of children, President upheld the need for an act to protect the fundamental rights of children in order to prevent them from being exploited. A discussion on the protection of children's rights was called at the Presidential Secretariat this morning under the patronage of President Ranil Vikram Singh. What laws do we have to protect children? We have to stop children from participating in protests. Children are taken to protests not because there is no one to look after them at home, but to use them as a shield, like what Prabhakaran did. We must request the police to stop it if such is happening. If not, everyone will start bringing children. Even university students will bring children. According to subsection 13 of section 27 of the constitution, the state shall promote with special care the interests of children and youth, so as to ensure their full development, physical, mental, moral, religious and social, and to protect them from exploitation and discrimination. Police should state the inability to permit protests if children are involved in it. We are taking necessary measures after discussing with the Attorney General. If not, this is going to be a game. This is a responsibility of the government. We have a higher duty for children. There are Sri Lankans in Mana who were captured while attempting to enter India illegally. Children and parents are kept separated in those locations. Children and parents need to be kept together. Police says that they were not ordered properly on what action to take. Please tighten law enforcement against the commercial exploitation of children for sexual activities. Why isn't a child's right act enacted? We must ensure that the children are not in demonstrations and tighten the law on sexual abuse of children. Please do them now. Please plan and provide a report on how to enforce the remaining. An expert committee will be appointed to provide recommendations for the remaining enforcements after six months. Please work on this now. Once measures are taken, no one can shout. There will be a huge protest if something happens to a child. Two new international climate advisors were appointed to President Ranil Vikramasinghe today. Former Norwegian Minister of Climate and Environment of Norway, Erik Solim, and former President of Maldives, Mohamed Nasheed, has been appointed as international advisors on climate to President Ranil Vikramasinghe today. Taking to his official Twitter handle, former Minister Erik Solim stated that President Vikramasinghe has a great vision for green economic recovery and for Sri Lankan climate leadership. Similarly, the former Maldivian president, Mohamed Nasheed, said that he will do his best and work alongside the former Norwegian minister. Now, the president's media division announced today that the farewell, welfare rather benefit fast-track program called Leave No One Behind, targeting low-income families, has so far received 2.3 million applications. It is expected that the 600,000 families that have been downgraded to the low-income category in the face of the second COVID-19 wave and the economic crisis faced by the country, as reported by the UNDP, are also eligible to apply for this welfare benefit track fast-track program. This is in addition to the 3.3 million families that are currently receiving welfare benefits or those who are already on the waiting list. Accordingly, it is estimated that 3.9 million families would apply for this social welfare program. The Welfare Benefit Board says that the program would be implemented under six phases and the second phase is also implemented concurrently with the first phase with the next step to collect data through a door-to-door -door campaign. Those who are already receiving some of the elderly, disabled and kidney patients welfare benefits 
as well as those who are seeking new welfare benefits should register under the program. Now, the High Commission of New Zealand in Colombo, Michael Appleton, points out that Sri Lanka importantly requires innovation, creativity and technology to overcome the present crisis. Addressing the 40th National IT Conference and Digital Investment Summit, Appleton said the information technology remains an important component in increasing local productivity and strengthening efficiency. The 40th National IT Conference and Digital Investment Summit organized by the Computer Society of Sri Lanka began in Colombo this morning under the theme Enriching Lives. We have found the IT industry to be an important component to increasing local productivity, to enhancing innovation, to strengthening efficiency and in building trust in our government systems. And this R&D investment by New Zealand's tech sector has quadrupled over the last 10 years. Right now, as Sri Lanka faces an unprecedented economic crisis, it is during moments like this that innovation, that technology, that creativity become all the more important. And I'm sure that Sri Lanka's recent adoption of the QR code as a pro bono public-private partnership, I'm sure that that has been foremost in Sri Lankans' minds as an example of how digital technology can find solutions to seemingly intractable problems. Like this, technology often offers many simple solutions to problems faced by our public. And in this time of significant policy reform that the Sri Lankan government undertakes, it seems obvious to me that technology needs to be an important part of the process of trying to improve the many day-to-day -day processes that the Sri Lankan people interact with, with the Sri Lankan government government and with others. I've now been in Sri Lanka for over a year and during my conversations the IT industry often comes up as one of the main export services and revenue streams for Sri Lanka as well as one of the major sources of innovation that can help Sri Lanka along the path for economic recovery. In these recent years I am sure that the industry has faced considerable challenges as well as opportunities given COVID-19, the current Sri Lankan economic crisis and a range of other global economic economic trends. But I imagine that the lessons and outcomes drawn from these challenges have given many of you food for thought on the future of the IT industry in Sri Lanka. Stay with us for more news after this short break. I know, I know, puta. Hey, baby, Rhino Nang Walata, safe Tamai Mulu Gedarama. Rhino Cement Roofing Sheets. Dang you know Rhino. <laughs> I know. Big Three. Uber eats Magin Idripat Karan, Adrian. Avashita Athiat Athiavashabhanda, Paritaka Kirima, the baby cover. Welcome back. No opposition parties in Parliament say that they will stand against any attempts of the government to postpone the local government elections, adding that necessary political and legal measures will be taken by them to do so. During a meeting convened by the opposition factions, independent parliamentarian Parli Champika Ranavakas said that this is an attempt of the government to remain in power forcefully. The opposition parties held discussions in Colombo today on standing against government's attempts to postpone elections. However, the JVP-led Jataka Jana Balavege and Frontline Socialist Party did not join these discussions. Api vipakshe vidhiyar sielum deshapan pakshe metivarna khaldebi mat pratipatya vidhiyar api kavurut ekangatavya kneh janatava sansung karagan napulvang ek kramya vidhiyar api daaki noa e palatpan metivarne tien vanang hondai kiye ne. Ather ate janamate sampurne ma andu te rehiv tien janamate akeni sa balhat karing palani randi city masandha chande kaldebi masandha gan utsa hai bavi tamu pehda. Me piri pato nitya nu kulakatiyutu karan nattoni deshapan kulakatiyutu karan nattoni. Even we nadhe 
විපක්ෂයේ මන්ත්‍රීවරු ඒ සන්ධානගත වෙලා කටයුතු කරන්න පෙළඹීම ගැන අපගේ ස්තුතිය පිරිනමෙන ඔය සියලු දෙනාට සියලු විපක්ෂ බලවේග එක තැනකට එකතු වෙලා ජනතාවගේ ප්‍රජාතන්ත්‍රවාදී අයිතිය මැතිවරණ අයිතිය දියව් කියන මතය ප්‍රකාශ කරන්න එකතු වෙලා ඉන්නවා කිසිම මැතිවරණකට යන්න ඒක සූදානම් නැහැ ඒ නිසා අපි විපක්ෂ පොදු මතයක් වෙන්න ඕන එක මගේ යෝජනා කරලා ආවේ අපි දැන් වහාම පාර්ලිමේන්තු මැතිවරණකට ඉල්ලන්න ඕන Now the first agrivoltaic power plant in Sri Lanka, Solar Universe was declared open today in Batiklo. This power plant is expected to add 20 gigawatts to the national grid annually. Speaking at the event, Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekar said the government expects to provide short-term leases to renewable energy developers and suppliers in a bid to implement renewable energy projects under the expected restructuring and government's power and energy policy. Solar Universe, the first agrivoltaic power plant in Sri Lanka, was declared open today in Bhavnathiu in Batiklo under the patronage of Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekar. This 10 megawatt ground mount solar power plant is expected to add 20 gigawatts to the national grid annually. We are beginning to become our capacity. I was thinking, basically, I was thinking that I can get the full. विश्वासूर्ज विदुरी बल सह बल शक्ति प्रतिपाद्य देशी आयोजक विदेशी आयोजक मेम पुनर्जनीय बल शक्ति निपयम करवाण करवाण केटी कालीन अवश्य बलपात्र लादीन ये अवश्य अवसर लादीन मेम व्यापति तव दुरट इक्मीम सक्रिय क्रियात्मक क्रीट अवश्य वटपीट निर्माण क्रीम अभी बलपूर्ण प्राप्ति No new business news. The ASPI closed in green as a result of price gains in counters such as Valuable One, Expo Lanka Holdings, and Selenco Insurance, with the turnover crossing 2.3 billion rupees. The ASPI ended 12.4 percent strong at 8,853.27, while the S&P SL20 index ended at 8,744.61 after gaining 1.31 points. The energy sector was the top contributor to the market while the capital goods sector was the second highest. Foreign participation in the market activity remained at subdue levels with foreigners closing as net buyers with 31 million rupees. Now the International Monetary Fund today downgraded its global growth forecast for 2023 to 2.7 percent as the world's largest economies continue to sputter amid widespread rate hikes aimed at reining in inflation. This is the first time since the year 2000 that the IMF has predicted global economic growth of less than 3 percent for the following year. The International Monetary Fund says global economic growth is expected to slow down by almost two percentage points in comparison to its July forecast. According to the latest data, the global economy will grow by 2.7 percent in 2023, resulting in recession in some countries. An IMF report said the global economy is experiencing a number of turbulent challenges, as inflation higher than ever seen in several decades. tightening fiscal conditions in most regions the russia ukraine conflict and the lingering covid-19 pandemic all weigh heavily on the outlook the imf added that the three largest economies the united states the european union and china will continue to stall in short the worst is yet to come and for many people 2023 will feel like a recession the report noted that this is the weakest growth profile since 2001 except for the global financial crisis and the acute phase of the covid-19 pandemic now the uk economy unexpectedly shrank in august strengthening predictions that it will fall into a recession prices are rising at their fastest rate for 40 years eating into people's budgets and outpacing growth in pay The surprise 0.3% drop came as factories and consumer facing businesses struggled 
Analysts th thought the economy would stall in August but not shrink as costs mount for businesses and households. The Bank of England has previously said that it expects the UK to fall into a recession by the end of the year. The latest data from the Office of National Statistics means that it, in the three months to August, GDP also fell by 0.3%. And that's all the news we have for you this evening. Join us again tomorrow at the same time. Good night.